Hello everyone, and we are back. So let's move to our next session, which will be teach your kids to code. And our yeah. speakers uh, is Samira, is the CEO from Safe Shafer Training Center, and his co her co-speaker Dennis Morgan, which is a general man manager at Raw IT Services. Yoki, so, can you give just a brief uh, yeah. summary of yeah, what you're going to talk about? Warm, warm welcome to you too, and uh, fantastic to, to have you here. Teaching your kids to code. Wow, yeah, I actually tried this, and it's really difficult. I mean, with our two with our two bigger ones, they are now into it, but the little one is still too small. But I think they started coding at about three age of three years so therefore i'm also looking really forward to to see about uh, to get information from your session and bits and pieces so i'm sure it's going to be a hit um samira please uh, introduce yourself briefly and um what is it that you're doing how did you get into this idea to teach um, kids to go how to code and um, tell us okay hello everyone so i'm samira uh, the CEO of Safe Shah Training Center. I am also the representative of Women in Tech Africa in Mauritius. So my topic for today would be teach your, co your kids how to code. So we, since we've started our company, we've always empowered women in the technology field. But um, let's say three years back, so we decided to accompany more kids in the technology field because we've seen the importance of technology to inculcate this, um, the STEM culture from kids so that they can have it until their secondary level, the tertiary level, and of course, to be in their uh, workspace. So I think this is more important that we have um, coding in our kids. So today's session will be mainly about kids and coding. And mm -hmm. our team, like I mentioned again, teach your kids how to code. So we are going to go briefly about how we, how we conduct our classes. Some of the slides will be delivered by my co-speaker, Mr. Dennis. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's going to be brief. And then we are going to have your question afterwards. Hopefully, we can sure. answer this. OK? Sure, so sure. Uh, if you allow me, can I start? No. Speaking of Dennis, give him give him also a, okay. a minute of Dennis. <laughs> thank you, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Samira. So let's start by introducing myself. So I am Denis. Uh, as already mentioned, I'm the general manager of Raw IT Services, which is actually a company providing IT solutions and uh, compliance solutions. And also, I am the programming officer at Safe Shot Training Center, where actually I, I look at all the training needs and all the development side of new for the training center. And uh, as Samira mentioned uh, just a few minutes back, three years ago, we started in this journey in looking on how we could empower our kids and seeing that there was more and more uh, the focus on STEM education. So we decided mm -hmm. to see how could we empower these children because we believe in the future that these children would need these skills. And, and eventually now what we see on the market is that there's a big skill gap from what is being taught from the academic side and what they need to deliver mm -hmm. on the market. So this is why we, we engage our Self in getting uh, these type of training for the kids so that we could empower them for the future. So without delaying, I would just uh, hand over to Samira to start mm -hmm. uh, going through the slide a bit in more in detail. Perfect. Thank you, Denise. So um, my topic again, so teach your kids how to, how to code. So let's go. So for me, this is very clear. This is what normally I always say to my kids and to the parents as well. So it doesn't matter if your child has never operated a computer or a laptop. As far as they're able to play on their mobile phone, games, then coding wouldn't be a problem for them. So this is the generation X we are talking of. <laughs> so um, so what is coding actually? What, what, what can we say about coding? So coding for me is very simple, a very simple language to understand. 
um, it's a fundamental literacy. And then coding also encourage take up challenges from very small. So in overall, the coding will encourage the kids to take up challenges, to have a good critical thinking, to bring innovative ideas and solutions. So which goes along with the STEM culture, which help them develop their critical thinking, creativity, collaboration, and communication. So like we see that in the future, the near future, everybody is talking about technology, driven technology future. I think this is why coding is very important and it's very useful skill for our kids. <clears throat> so move on to the next slide. So what language do we teach at SafeSha and the kids overall? So we've focused mainly on two basic language. One is Scratch and the other one is Python. So why Scratch and why Python? So Python and Scratch, they are both perfect for beginners. And it's very easy to set up. And the download is very straightforward. You can have the offline version as well. And it's very kid friendly. And if we go onto the research, we see that there's a great demand, especially for the Python, which is growing continuously and very fast. So at SafeSha, we have uh, different levels. So we have we've decided to break the levels of coding to different ages. So we have, let's say, we've categorized five to eleven age would be the basic level of coding, and then we'll go back. We'll go again on eleven to fourteen would be a bit more intermediate. And then 14 to 17 will be more advanced level. So I will leave Dennis now, who is going to give you a very brief and somewhere brief, but a bit deep way in terms of coding to just um, let you know how we teach the kids for uh, the coding session. So up to you, Dennis. Thank you, Samira. Thank you. Thank you very much. So actually, um, just to catch up a bit on what Samira said, uh, one of the things that we've noticed about coding is when you reach the student who is being doing computing at school, at secondary level, when you talk about programming with them, they always say that it's very difficult. It's not easy to understand. Actually, for us, uh, coding should be, in fact, cool uh, and also should be very much easy to 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 work with and, and this is why we we believe that actually uh we should start the coding very uh early stage with, with scratch and then being building up the computational thinking so that when they come to the secondary and even tertiary education they are more you know uh, having these logical thinking problem solving Create, uh, being more creative, uh, collaborative, and being able to communicate. Because when we talk about coding, it's not just writing the codes. It's, it's actually uh, improving things, uh, trying to, to solve problems, uh, trying to collaborate. Because when, when you code, you, you don't need to code alone. It's a community. So this is what we are trying to build up at SafeSha with these kids. When we deliver the courses, actually, we don't actually deliver courses to one or two. What we do is we get a bunch of, of uh, kids together and then we make them do the coding together. So um, just to talk about uh, a bit more about the coding also, uh, why do we need to engage ourselves in coding? As you know, uh, as things are moving moving uh, to the future, we are more talking about machine learning, we are talking about artificial intelligence, we are talking about um, many, many things that would need a new workforce. And that new workforce needs to start somewhere. And we believe, we strongly believe that this new workforce should start from these small kids and growing up in this area of uh, computer of, of coding and, and programming. So actually now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm not going to show you how to code actually. I'm just going to show you a bit how do we run the coding classes with the kids at SafeSha. So 
normally what we do, we organize this in activities. So these kids would be participating in activities in doing coding and not necessarily doing coding on a computer because activities can be like, you know, having ropes, papers, and then we try to generate the thinking and the logical process in their mind. And then we make them move to the computers. Actually, uh, I was a, a student and learning coding was in front of a computer. The teacher used to be in front of the class, so we used to have the notes. He would explain and then you, you had to, to actually do the job of coding and learn by yourself sometime. And sometimes it was not easy to understand. So what we did actually at Seusha was to rethink of how we could actually deliver the, the coding training and how could we make it fun? Because we didn't want to, to, to actually do a coding class that these small kids would actually go away and, and run away from these classes. So it, it, it's all about fun and learning in the training. So I would ask Samira, since she's got the hands in moving the slides, to just move on the next slide for me. OK, so you will see in this example of how do we explain what is an algorithm? So basically from here, I would guess if you are in in the, the programming side, you would already know the explanation of of uh, doing of the explanation of algorithm. But here what we, we we try to do is, for example, to give the student, what did you do this morning before you arrive at school? So we, we start by building these activities and try to make them order it by themselves or organize groups of uh, kids together, thinking about it and write it down. So once they know they've been writing it down, so we can discuss about it. So we have this group discussion. We have individually that they can actually explain their logic behind. So once they understand this, so now we can move forward in the class. So on the next slide, sorry, you would see a, a scratch example. So, so those who are very familiar with Scratch, you, you would actually be able to know that you can move around with the, with the coding, not necessarily writing down the codings. So you've got a window where you can actually move the commands, but eventually they need to understand the logic behind. And this is what we do at first. So if we go back on the previous slides, so we make the, the kids become more creative. We try to push the logic we try to make them think about how they would do things, and then we come to this uh, to this part of Scratch where they actually built things, where they actually built games for them, and actually it's it's really fun. So they do it in group discussion, then they come to the computer eventually with the assistance of a of a teacher. We we don't we don't call it teacher or trainer, so. It's someone in the class that's here to help them, to mentor them, to actually do this coding. So on the next one would be the actually what they do. So when, as you say, as example, it's, it's really simple to understand. But behind this, you need to make sure that they understand the logic. And this is what we try to achieve with the kids. So if you see the example here, so when you click on the flag, it's going to ask you how many streets do you have? So it's going to wait. So you have to set the numbers to answer and then it moves on to the next step. So just before writing down the coding on Scratch, they have to understand the logic behind of why they need to put, to put these commands, why do they need to ask and what's the logic behind in writing all these commands onto Scratch. Eventually, the output is going to be displayed when you play on Scratch. And this is what we try to do with these small kids. So we start very little. It's fun. Actually, all parent complaints about their, their kids being all the time on their mobiles playing games. 
So here, what we try to promote is let them build their own games by being creative, by understanding the logic and the coding behind. So your kid would be busy, yes, playing games, but eventually building up their own set of video games. So move on to the next slide. So you would see that eventually in any of the trainings you have to get you have to speak about the terminology because when, as they move on things will get a bit more complex so you need to provide uh, a simplified uh, language for these students for them to understand so we've just given you two examples here of terminology of what is a sprite and what is a variable so we would actually uh, explain these to them so and then put an example in that so that they could easily understand these terminology so uh, just on the next slide okay so what i'm going to show you now so moving on maybe uh for these small kids uh five to seven so as they move on now you go to the next level where they start you know understanding the scratch and we move on to the Python programming language. And I think uh, Python is, is almost everywhere. Um, actually, if I take myself being in cybersecurity, uh, Python is, is, we write our script actually through Python. We automate our script through Python. So it's basically being used everywhere. If you talk about IoT, Internet of Things. So this is where also Python plays an important uh, part of it. So at this stage, uh, when they finish with the scratch level, so we make them move to the Python language. And on this part, so I'm just going to show you again, for example, how do we explain uh, the flowchart? I mean, if you are at secondary level or even at university level, so these are the things that you are going to need to be learning. And this is what we do here. So we make it fun. We show them, for example, the explanation of this symbol. OK, what does it mean? And also their function in a flowchart. And I'm just going to show you as next example of how we do it with the example. So basically, in a computer class, you, this flowchart would be like for how would you define a process? But here we are showing them how to make a sandwich. OK, so the process starts, of course. So you've got to prepare two slides of bread, spread the margarine on it, add the cheese, close the sandwich, cut the sandwich, and the process ends here. So as you see, it's not related to actually computing not telling them that okay you need to do a program and you need to do the flowchart and you need to actually build the flowchart so we make it a fun way because doing a sandwich i think most of the kids would know how to do a sandwich and most probably not everyone would it, would do it the same way so we, we we try to give this type of example okay like developing this type of flowchart showing them how to do it so and then we move on to the computing side of doing it through Python. So moving on to the next one. So here eventually is an example of a code that they would be writing on the Python. So uh, going, I didn't make a complete flow of example, but this is an example where you see where to where we want to bring these kids. So starting by simple thing, starting by things that they understand, like making the sandwich to come to these more complex coding where they are going to actually write the code, discuss about it and do this coding in group or sometimes doing it alone by themselves. Eventually Python, you can run it online. You can have the on offline version. So we give them the opportunity with materials. So we've got behind a whole set of materials that we provide to the 
to them. We have the online training that is available to them. So they've got all the support to do these type of training. And we've tried eventually to make uh, these materials as user friendly as possible, depending on their age, so, so that it's easily under understandable. So this is an example of how they would be writing the codes. And if you go more, so here it's a bit more complex. So th this could demonstrate the creation of call and recall of a user defined function. So the program is basically to display the stock level from product A to E through a bar chart. So you have the set of coding written and you have the output on the terminal that is being displayed down on the right hand side. So it's just an example to show you how we take the kids at a lower age and how do we build the competency along so that when they arrive to the secondary or tertiary education, they are already equipped with these logical thinking, creativity, and also something very important, the persistence. I think if you are develop a developer, one of the things you need to be very much aware of is you need to be persistent. Writing a code is not just writing three lines and then everything is, work is going to work perfectly fine. So it's a persistence that you need to develop in writing the code. So this is how we do actually the, the, uh, the training and how do we build the competencies. So here again, Eventually, when you do the coding, we need to act actually be able to test and improve. So this is again an example on Python. How do we show them a uh, term like break, watch, step for them to learn things? And, and if you are already a developer, so these are the things that you already are doing in your day to day job. So just imagine what we are trying to do. So we are getting these kids prepared for their future jobs, OK? So we build these earlier, OK, at the, at the point where they can actually capture most of this information. So we, I think most of you, you started the coding most probably when you were at secondary level and most probably at university level. Not certain that it was pretty much at the lower age. So what we are trying to do is really to start something at the lower age and then build the competency up, up to the to a level at tertiary level. So again here, simple terminology that we provide to these kids for them to better understand okay, what they are trying to do and what they, are, what they need to achieve. OK, so I won't go into details in explaining the terminology. I'm pretty sure that uh, you would be most familiar with te these terminologies. But what the focus here is about kids. So what we want to show you and what we want to demonstrate is that how do we take the kids up to a level where they can understand coding and where they are being empowered and where they, this can be a luggage, a, a plus for them ahead for for jobs that may come across to them or whether they are going to, to embark the SM in, in computer science and so on. So going more uh, the advanced level eventually. So these are for these students which actually are at uh, from five HSE level and even at, even, uh, even at university level. So this is where it's more complex, so it's where we spend time and where they build up the, the, the knowledge at earlier stage. So this is, these are example of how do we explain them about if, else, statement, switch, break, and then we get on to this. So what we did here was to uh, eventually take piece, bits and pieces of explanation and put it in a slide. So if I had to go into details, Eventually, we would have to do a whole course on Python and eventually ask the, the platform to give us more time. So I'm, I've tried to be a bit more short in my presentation, but just by giving you some hints 
and tips of how we deliver these trainings and eventually making sure that you people on the other side, the audience, understand how serious we are in teaching the, the kids the coding part and how we are passionate about it, that we believe that we need to actually skill up these uh, kids with these type of skills because we truly believe that this is going to help them in the future, not so long because technology moves fast, really fast, and we really need our, our kids to actually have the skills ahead. So this is another example again of uh, how we teach Python. How do we go about the different topics under Python? So moving on to the next slide again. OK, so for example here, what happens if you enter a password? OK, and then it goes on like this. So as I said, I won't go into details. These are examples for you to see. What type of activity do, do we carry out with your kids? OK, so it's not just like uh, reading a slides, showing them slides, but we built these uh, trainings in activities. So we make them participate in activities. So they have to deliver these type of codings. They have to do it. They have to get their hands onto it to deliver these codings. So again, one, I, I've tried to put some example to show you how can how complex can we go in the in the coding part. OK, so on the next one again about case. So most probably if you're if you are in the coding, you would surely recognize that these are things that you use in your day to day. So just to show you to where we are taking these topics and explaining them to these kids. I think eventually when they will move to their university and they, when they get onto their job, this is going to surely help them and they would have a competitive advantage compared to others who have not embarked their SEM in these type of trainings. So again, on the next slide. So here again, you see, this is an example of a practice. So going from the explanation, running the activity, then they need to practice. So this is where they get their hands onto it. So we try to do to encourage them. We do quizzes. We try to enhance the classes by uh, making activities, by making not, you know, competing with others, but, you know, try to make sort of a competition in themselves by having small different groups and tell them, OK, you guys, you need to do this. The other one need to do this. Come, OK, in front of the class, show us what you've been doing. Explain to us the logic behind this coding eventually uh, with the guidance of the trainer eventually. OK, so on the next one again, terminologies. So you would see that these are simple terminologies, but eventually we have the materials beha behind that is provided to the student for them to get more knowledge. We do have video trainings. We do have our online platforms, which I've mentioned earlier. So th all these materials are provided to them and eventually uh, us behind to help them understand every of these terminologies. OK, so the next one would be. Uh, so this is the slide where I need to hand over to Samira. So I hope I've been able to actually get your focus on what we do and how we do it. As I said earlier, I was not here to do a class on Python. That was not the aim of the presentation. The aim of the presentation was to show you how SafeShark actually delivers the training, how and what materials we provide to your kids, and how we at SafeShark are passionate about the subject, and also how do we want to make sure that the kids actually are the future generation of people here that can actually create things on the world to actually put, you know, we are a very small island. I, I usually say this to Samira. We are a very small island in a big world. So we want 
to have to have to place something on that small island and people from outside can say okay these guys they've been able to develop that stem education in Mauritius and these people are going around the world and creating lots 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 of new things for the world and eventually making the world a better place so that's all for me i'll hang over to samira to continue on the slides thank you denis yep fantastic information and i have to say i really like this um playful handling of um yeah programming concepts because i mean this is the easiest way about how to get kids into it how to get them interested in uh, logical uh, challenges um and um yeah um fine tuning them in a way that actually the steps that they do and in daily life are transferable to computer instructions. So yeah, please, Shamira, your turn. <laughs> Actually, uh, for me, from my part, it's only the wrap-up part. So um, mm -hmm. I would say coding for kids is getting very popular, actually, um, around the world. So we need to get uh, our kids here in Mauritius and around the regional island as well to get into coding. And the main takeaways that I would say um, that we need to remember about coding uh, especially about the Scratch and the Python is perfect for the beginners. It's very easy to use, very easy to download. And like we say, user friendly, but here I'm going to say it kid friendly. And coding is here to stay, never to leave. So let's inspire the next generation of the digital innovators. Yeah, definitely. I mean, our kids also, my kids here, they started actually with um, all the stuff that is available on, on the hour of code. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I said, uh, my son, he was about three years when when he got into that. And uh, um, we also have, um, I was a participant or supporter for um, a, a nice campaign on Kickstarter, which actually had the concept of programming uh, um, as a board game. So literally, you are completely without computer. It's just that you have a nice um, um, board game with uh, activity cards. Mm -hmm. And literally, the activity cards are like computer instructions, like move forward, turn left, repeat. Uh, and then you can actually put different obstacles and 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 um, crystals to collect onto the onto the the, the game board, and uh, this way they can they start to think how, in which sequence they need to need to put their play cards in order then to complete the tasks to collect the crystals and avoiding obstacles. So it's pretty interesting about this and what are the possibilities uh, around here. And I can imagine you at your training center that uh, you offering all these kind of activities as well. So yes, exactly. exactly. And, and this we, is why, uh, yes, Denise, go on. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say that I think um, they, they are most welcome to come and visit us. Uh, most welcome to actually um, Come and try. I mean, uh, there's no harm in it in trying just to get your kids to try it. Um, there's no come yet. Come and just try one session with us. Just try and see how, because when, when we talk, um, I, I, last time I, I was like, you know, uh, there was one parent talking to me about, said, okay, I, my kid won't be able to do that. It's too too complicated. And I said, let, it, let him come. Let him come. Let him come and try. You know, and playing, like, like you said, board games. Uh, this is what we do in our activities. It's not like yeah. when we start the coding, it's a computer, and then you start writing on the programs. Uh, we also build the activities. We, we have ropes at the training center. So we build square with the ropes, papers, writing down, and then they, they, they place the papers. And, and this is where it's fun. It's not only yeah. computers. And I think this is where... You would get these uh, the kids to really like what they are doing instead of coming and sitting in front of a computer and just writing, writing, writing things. So this is, uh, I think it's great. It's a great example that you you gave. So um, this is actually what we do uh, as our activity. Uh, maybe Samira would just wanted to add up something on that. 
No, it's just that, um, like I mentioned earlier, so it's just very easy. So you said everything, Denise. So for me, from my part, it's just to get uh, the kids more encouraged. So we've just, um, last week, we've just announced that our we are going to have our dig um, coding competition. And it's going to be mainly about Scratch. So this is a way that we give the opportunity to the kids to learn about coding and how is it important for them uh, especially when they're going into the secondary, the tertiary level. And mm -hmm. uh, like I say, so coding is here to stay. So so we have to make a mess. Because if we see the generation nowadays, I took it from my kids as well. So from my son, who is only eight years, but he, he can just go on the scratch and do the, the coding by himself. He just watched the video that I showed him, and then he just closed the video and, and work on the, on the coding himself. So I think it's yep. there already in them. So we just, we, we are here to only accompany them, to make them see further what they can do uh, with the competencies that they have. Definitely, yes. All right. Aditya, any comments from your side? So, uh, I think that it's just a really good thing what you're doing because uh, coding in primary level, it's not even taught at the government school. Uh, it's only private institutions, so doing that, it's really good. It's a really good thing. Okay, Great. thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. thank you, Samira, Dennis, for being present at the conference. Um, looking forward to to more interaction, to more cooperations, also in regards with the um, women in tech activities uh, and other possibilities as well, and. Um, with that, um, I leave you, and um, thank you so much for your time. And looking I forward, think it would be great to have you as, as well on board for our coding competition. You see, so <laughs> I'll share the information with you. So that would be great to have great coders, great developers here to help our kids. So we sure, say sure. alone, alone we make you know alone sometimes is different, but when you join hands together, then it's very powerful. Yeah, and, and we really want to to especially for the kids uh, and, yeah. and I said earlier there's one word about passionate it's really we are really very much passionate about it and we really want that these kids are able to to do these things and make that accessible for them um, and that we grow that community here mm -hmm. in Mauritius so it's really like doing that in collaboration and we believe in this model of collaboration with together uh, i think in the audience also if there are people who would like to collaborate share ideas we are very much open to it uh it's it's true we are a training center but collaboration it it's what makes everything grows and it's really important i think yeah and I, I would i would actually thank you also for for giving us the opportunity to be on your platform uh, it's been really great uh working with you and the team together and uh looking forward of course having uh, more of this collaboration and growing together and we hope that we've been able to provide uh as much information as we could to the audience and we really look forward to answering questions if they have or not or maybe drop, drop us an email <laughs> they would see sorry they, they already have our contact details on the last slides so we would be very much happy to to answer any of the queries about that yes pleasure pleasure yeah okay Aditya Yes. What's what is your what is I mean at what at what age did you start getting into coding whether it was conscious or unconscious? Well, I think uh, it was at age ten because uh, I started with, with HTML and I don't know if HTML it's it's more like a markup language than programming itself, but at least it was a start. Then mm -hmm. uh, I went up with Python. No, sorry, not Python. I, I think my first one was Visual Basic. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was Visual Basic. Then it was Python. Uh, it was a pretty good uh, thing, uh, pretty good experience. Just the only thing that I missed, I, w I would love if I had that opportunity to learn it before, even before, because mm -hmm. in primary school, but 
Yeah. Uh, I, le- I learned it in secondary when I was 12. Yeah. It yep, was yep. pretty good. And how about you, Juki? How's the well, actually, experience teaching your kids? And your I mean, um, let's let's um, let's move over. I mean, in, I think if I remember correctly, I think I started in first year of secondary, which would have been then in Germany. It's about um, ten years old, and we at the time we had exposure to Apple two E models and um, yeah it was really like you know monochrome green black uh, screens but i don't know it already caught this 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 um the spark was already there because i mean it was the possibility um to be able then to to actually create um 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 you know you could put your 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 thoughts into the machine and see how something is developing and that you could create something. I mean, for me, it was really encouraging to go forward. And, you know, at the time, this was then really about that I started to, you know, uh, buy uh, computer magazines. Um, at the time, it was then the, the, the Commodore C64. And, you know, I, I was then typing the, the the listings that uh, that were available in the magazines and and took it from there so it was pretty impressive and then about you know like seeing the sprites move around on the screen that was pretty awesome yeah, yeah. and and uh, and then it's the situation the next um, real deep dive into programming and understanding was then in regards to a program language called Logo, which means that you're actually um, navigating um, a turtle uh, exactly like actually the board game that I bought on that I supported with Kickstarter is exactly based on that turtle concept of the programming language logo where you have simple instructions like you know uh, put the pen down move uh, and then it draws a line behind itself uh, turn left turn right etc certain degrees and with that when you started to combine uh, these these instructions at the end I had mesmerizing, uh, how do you call it, uh, Lizarjou uh, diagrams, because it's based yeah. on mathematic functions that you get this kind of m- mandala uh, uh, looking like uh, um, circles and, and bits and pieces. So it was super cool. And it was like just sitting there watching while it was starting, you know, put the lines on the screen. It was it was really so rewarding and fulfilling. And nowadays, having then these these activities um, completely taken away from the computer, like um, uh, you know, just by by playing, acting, and and having this gamification, uh, it's just fantastic. Yeah, yeah, me too. I think it's really awesome to have games act as a tool for educating about programming languages and the concepts and all. So yeah, I mean, one of the coolest thing and super simple is like, um, imagine you had actually, you had primary school and you would be the teacher. You can get those kids so super easy into programming in such a way that you just tell them, okay, I am the robot what are your instructions? And the kids are then like, okay, they need to guide you through the classroom. And of course, you know, if you're standing in front of the wall or in front of the desk and they tell you to move forward, you move forward and bump into it. I mean, the kids are going to have so much fun with these kind of activities. Yeah. You can't believe it. And so, yeah, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to see that um, Samira and Dennis uh, are offering these type of activities uh, here in Mauritius. And uh, being then connected, I saw the Hour of Code um, using uh, platforms like Scratch. Um, I mean, you have all the tools at hand to, to develop, to nourish the next generation of, of coders and hackers. And you can inspire them to actually be creative and use their mind. Exactly, yeah. All right, the audience. So much for the current talk. Um, we're going to be back after a short break.
So please don't run away. Grab a coffee. Check out the neighboring rooms. <laughs> Maybe get some fresh air. And we'll be back yeah. at one o'clock with the next session uh, in the Batcave. So yeah. stay tuned. Stay tuned. We'll be back.